Keith Jones. How you doing, baby? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing really, really good. Yeah. Hey, today's subject, I want to talk about courage, you okay. know? Okay. And so most people think, uh, or I know I have back in the day when I was trying to achieve things, which was probably about a week ago, you know, <laughs> <laughs> up until that point, uh, you know, courage being about what I'm trying to do or achieve or accomplish or do, some, do overcome some kind of fear. You know, one of the definitions I've used over the last 10 years to define courage is, is the power to take action in the face of fear. Yes. Is how I described Great it. Great definition. Yeah, and, but most of that has been uh, to, to do or to act as opposed to to be, you know, in terms of courage. So I thought we'd do a show today on uh, the courage not to fight back. Okay. What, what do you think? I think it's an excellent topic. I think that judging when it's time to fight back and when it's time not to fight back is an important distinction that we all need to learn, especially for men. I think men have a tendency to fight when they don't need to fight, mm -hmm. uh, to take action when they don't need to take action, when maybe listening is more required. Um, I don't know what a general rule would be because it, everything is so varied. There's so many circumstances that would require right. different responses. Right. So when you think about not exercising any sort of aggression uh, in response to, to something that comes to you, what kind of rules do you have for yourself? Uh, my rules to myself are, I have an ultimate uh, way of being that I want to show up, how I want to experience life, and that's to be calm and peaceful. Uh, that's how I want to show up. And so typically in fighting back or being aggressive, it takes me out of that. Now, that's different from being my best or doing my best. Well, well let me ask you something, like, is, is make it less abstract. For example, if, I, if someone insulted, um, let's say, my, uh, my wife, or someone insulted someone who was really, really important to me, um, what would be the appropriate action from your point of view? Would you think that you'd have to take action, or do you walk away and just leave it? Or what do you deal in this, do, do with a situation when somebody calls you a name or flips you off or uh, to, does something that's completely irrational? Do you match their irrationality or do you just look the other way? I, I, I used to, I'll give you one example and then we'll trade examples of how we, we both handle it. Uh, let's say someone uses the N-word, Okay. right? In the past, totally offended by it. You know, uh, I don't listen to music with it. I only listen to clean versions of music. I don't like it in television programming. Mm -hmm. uh, I've kind of gotten to the point if it's like um, authentic to the time period and stuff like that, then I can you know watch the program as long as it's not over the top or gratuitous. Uh, but for the most part, that would be totally offensive to me. I got, like my egos, I mean, it's like I got no tolerance for that. Okay. And uh, now the way that I approach it is is. Well, I'm grateful that I don't have myself surrounded by um, people that say it um, at me, to me, or in conversation. I don't watch a lot of programming on television that has it in it or, or listen to music with it. So that's helped quite a bit. Good. But the other thing I've really gotten is, is that um, it's, it's my thoughts that are telling me to feel a certain way about it. And I've gotten to the point now that it's just a word. You know, and so I have a tendency not to, the, I try to, uh, to utilize courage in a way to make me feel and show up as someone who doesn't take those things personally. Okay. You know, I mean, this is obviously something that, you know, I've thought about for a while, the, 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 the N-word and, uh, and being offended by it. So that's why I'm having trouble kind of getting it out, how I feel about it. Uh, but my courage now is to not react to it, you know, N not to react to it. And that includes not judging the people who say it. And, you know, Eckhart Tolle has this thing that we all at any moment cannot be our higher self. And so in that moment when someone says it or acts out that way, I tell myself without judgment uh, or ju without judging them, judging myself about how I feel about it, 
is they're operating from their current, present level of consciousness. And, 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 and if I react to it, that I am acting in a way that's consistent with my current level of consciousness. So if someone said it last week or a month ago, I may have handled it really well in a peaceful way, let it go. Uh, but if someone says it today, my consciousness may have changed and I'm more uh, agitated by it. So I come back to what is the level of consciousness that I want to employ at this very moment that keeps me peaceful. If I can get to that quickly, and that's a lot of practice, yeah. but if I can get to that quickly, then I will have no reaction. Not judging the other person and not becoming angered by it. I like how you've worked in the idea of the higher self too. I think that's really important and we lose track of that. To me, um, since I'm a majority guy, I've never been a minority of not, I'm not a woman, I'm not a Hispanic or a black. I don't have any, you know, I've always been in a majority, so I've never had that kind of right. deal, a life deal to, 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 to mess with. But one of the things that I, I ask myself when I'm dealing with the issue of whether it's important to to show courage by avoiding the problem or by engaging. The test to me is, does it make any difference? If I'm going back to somebody who's insulted me with another insult, or if somebody flips me off and I flip them off, that is a pretty low level of being. That's a pretty low Absolutely. level of enlightenment. And it doesn't do anything to change the behavior. It's right. just made me, as you pointed out, wallow in the mud with this dude. Right. right. But if you're in a situation where there's an opportunity, let's say, at a town meeting to stand up to, let's say, uh, something that's happen happening politically or economically within that town meeting that is improper or you don't like or is unfair to you, right. that could make a difference by speaking up. Absolutely. And in that context, you definitely have not only the right to speak up, but I think the moral obligation to your own totally integrity agree. to say what's wrong or to say your piece about it. Exactly, and to try to do it in a very civil way. Absolutely. Like, like without blaming or injuring another party. That's right. Bl I think blame is um, a very difficult uh, concept for people to get because it's so ingrained in our lives. The idea of blame, I think, comes from responsibility, but often it's not a, a question of someone being responsible. It's often um, a, a constellation of circumstances that have created a problem, and no one particular person or particular institution or particular right. thing that you can t tamper with um, has caused it. So it's a, more of a, a complicated problem. Right. So, so blame often doesn't get you anywhere. It's dysfunctional. Yeah. Exactly. So you know, you, you, went, you went back to, does it solve anything if I react in a way right. that uh, is fighting back? So uh, in a relationship, if you and your partner are having a conversation, uh, that other person becomes heated and they say something to you, that you know your ego finds offensive. Yeah. Uh, like, how do you? What do you do in that situation? Do you engage, or do you, uh, you know, just let it go? I mean, what do you do when courage is called upon? How do you, you know, respond? Well, usually I blow it. I mean, <laughs> when I was married, I was I was terrible at this. Uh, I admit it. It was totally my fault. Often when. Um, things would get out of hand or ratcheting up with a, you know, you did this, oh yeah, well you did this, oh yeah, well, you know, it, right. it doesn't get you anywhere, but I, I'm, I have done that. I know what that feels like. And I think it is an ego, totally, right. totally an ego response. You feel wounded by someone right. you trust and love and you feel a bit betrayed because they're criticizing you or, or pointing, pointing something out. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. it could be legit. It could be legit. <laughs> so that brings us back to the idea of what what courage really does require. And courage requires engaging when there's some good that can be served by the engagement. Right. So for example, in that case, I'd like to think that if I had a wife now and there was an issue about it, the one thing we would try to do is to say, again, take a breath, don't react, don't say the first thing that comes to your mind, and then I think the next thing is communicate. So, right. and make sure you understand the other person. So are you saying fill in the blank? So you, you've got it, for sure. Right. And that might give the person an out, too, to say, well, no, I'm not saying that. What I meant was this. Or, right. And then the second thing, I think, when you're dealing with relationships, is always important to talk about how it lands on you and right. not ascribe motion, uh, motives right. to the other person. You did this because... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. It's always, when you do that or say that, I feel like this. That's the, right. that's the only intelligent way to continue the communication. Lastly, with relationships, is we probably should do a whole show on relationships. And, and lots of failure there, man. <laughs> but, <laughs> Me too. <laughs> but I think one of the things that you, you, we should always have with our loved ones, the people that are, you know, that you're, when you're dealing with a significant other, that's supposed to be the number one person in the right. world who has your back, right? Right. So there ought to be some sort of safe word or a communication word where you just stop, no matter how rough it seems. 
where you say gobbledygook, and that that puts the clutch in on the argument, right. at least for a minute. Right. Yeah. The ego doesn't like that. <laughs> He's at all. A dumb, especially if you're on a roll. Yeah, yeah you got some good stuff, and you got a lot to say. Uh, it doesn't like that at all, no, you know. No. And I'm with you though, you know. But that takes courage too to do that. Exactly. That's what, I, that's what I was about to just say. So thank you. Is the courage to stop and just let it go, like. And what I try to do too in relationships is, mm -hmm. and it, it takes a ton of practice. And I'm finally getting to the point to where I feel like you know I've, I'm, I'm decent at it. I wouldn't say I've mastered it, but I'm decent at it. Because the minute you think you've mastered it, life throws you a, a test. A test. <laughs> like, oh, about that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I try to ask myself, well, does this uplift the relationship? Is this uh, keep the friendship uh, one that is connected and respectful and loving and you know and I'm doing this in nanoseconds in my head while you know my ego is like dude let's go to war right now you know I'm trying in that moment to because to, to be calm and be peaceful when that happens uh, and think about what do I really want this relationship to live into and that normally uh, keeps me there, but it's taking a ton of practice, man. You're talking about there were landmines. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting blown up with every step. Everything out of my word uh, uh, mouth is the wrong thing. I'm trying to retreat and not engage. I got you. you know, the, I got you. I the, there, the other party is is, is 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 taking a step forward. I was like, no, I can't let that one slide. That got to say something, you know. And so all that things happen. But you know, Eckhart Tolle talks about that. What happens when you get into those situations where you are not, uh, you know, uh, using courage to, 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 to let it go, and you have the courage not to fight back. He talks about that in each human being, you have what's called a pain body inside, mm. and I have it too. Mm. And it's ego, you know, created, and it thrives off drama, and it will create it yeah. at any moment. That's and so you will say something, I'll say something back, and then we get into this dance, and it just keeps going, and then eventually, Something will happen, a day or two will pass, we'll calm down, and then we start, you know, being friends again, or if you're in a relationship with a significant other, you start, you know, uh, being uh, nice to each other, you become intimate again, and then something else will happen, and it just keeps doing this dance where the highs and lows of the relationship. I want to stay at a nice, even, pleasant, calm, peaceful, keel in a relationship, and I found the best way to do that is not to let my pain body do its thing. And when it shows up, to understand it. The difference between people that are conscious, awakened, or spiritual, or led by the higher self is, it's not that they don't have this ego or this pain body inside. They do. The difference is right. they are aware of it and they have learned how to train themselves to not succumb to it. And that's really, really big. I think that's very important. And courage often means self-control. Courage right. has a lot to do with being the, the big the big person, being the person who's taking the higher road and just ignoring whatever uh, comes your way. And, and I think that's especially difficult with relationships, but I think it's especially important not to go down that path where you're doing tit for tat and there's no possible way that that's going to result, result in anything um, that's positive. It's not going to lead to more understanding, more love, more appreciation. Exactly. It's going to tear down that relationship, and it's it, it, when you extrapolate that to the population in general, it's the same thing is true of flipping a guy off. Right, it does not solve anything. So in those situations where it's an ego base with no upside, you have to let it go, and you have to just disregard it and note that it is powerful. And congratulate yourself for exercising your power not to do that. It takes more courage. Right, and, and, and a lot of people. Uh, I found won't understand that kind of response to situations um, and so the people so it's gonna be hard you're gonna feel like you're on this island alone and people are gonna be like well why did you say something why didn't you fight back but there's no way you should stand for that I, I want to stand stood for that mm -hmm. and really it's the people the people that are peaceful that are really your, uh, your, your mentors or the, your teachers around you. And we can all be teachers to each other. You don't have to be uh, the Dalai Lama. You know, you don't have to be Mother Teresa to be peaceful. All of us have that in us and we can do it. And so I'm learning and practicing trying to tap into it. And I'll tell you an interesting story that... Uh, that Be before you do it, just one, one mm -hmm. little footnote to that. And that is that, that what you've just described, Keith, I think is especially difficult for males, especially if you're in a macho situation and it's mono and mono, one guy against the other guy, even though it's the stupidest, 
ridiculous fight. It's not about the fight. It's about supreme power. It's about who is the dominant male. And that's in our biology and reptilian right. brain. Right. So for men, this is particularly critical to be able to feel that you have courage and not engage. Right. Difficult, yeah, high it, level. Yeah, men physically, you just feel like you want to uh, that's our world. Yeah, exert yourself in that way. And I think for, for uh, women and for men, I think to do so verbally you know, uh, yes, it's, right. it's, it's, it's really big too. You know, I know a lot of guys who will say something back or you gotta have the last word, my hand is up. <laughs> uh, and, and I also know women who are the same way. And so um, one of the th I wanna give an example of how you've shown the, the courage not to fight back in the situation and I'll give an example. Uh, but before that, I tell you this interesting story. Yeah, please. Okay, so Sorry again, one of the podcasts I listen to every morning, there's a Zen master who's living in this village and all the people in the village really, really respect him. And they come to him for guidance and for wisdom, and he shares it freely. He's peaceful, he's calm, that's his path, and, it's, and it also includes a being of service. So there is this young teenager who comes to the Zen master, and uh, she seeks some advice. He gives it to her. Now, behind, you know, behind the scenes, she's in a relationship with a local village boy, and she becomes pregnant. Mm -hmm. Her parents finds out, and they're upset because it's, uh, it's, it's a village that doesn't like, uh, you know, that looks down upon you having premarital sex and, uh, you know, having a child that you, uh, there's no father. Right. Okay. Right. And so what, what happens is, is she blames the, the birth of the child on the Zen master. And so the family gets the village all riled up, they go to the Zen master, they give the Zen master the baby and they give him a dressing down for taking advantage of you know, their daughter and for being a person who has low morals and no values. Uh, and they just really vilify him, completely vilify him. The response that the Zen master gives is, all he says is, is that so? And then for the next couple of years, he takes care of the child as if it's his own. A few years later, the young lady comes clean and she tells her parents what really happened, that the father is a local village boy, the parents feel bad about it, they go back to the Zen master, apologize you know, for accusing him of such a thing, and they take the baby, say, we'll take the baby back, the Zen master hands on the baby that he's taken care of for all this time, and the Zen master's response was, is that so? And that's it, you know, didn't defend himself, didn't say anything, but the courage in that moment to do that. Right. And so a personal experience of me is that, you know, um, I've had, you know, some things that have happened before uh, in which I didn't exercise great judgment. Uh, I will admittedly say that. Um, and people said a lot of things and I had no response. My only response was, hey, thank you for your contributions to my life and for the community. I really appreciate you and I wish you well. You know, that was it. And uh, what I was clear on in that moment is what you said. Will, will my reaction or my response to this, the one that my ego wants to make, want to take, will it make things better? And the answer was no. I was going to be taken completely out of the present moment. I was going to want to defend, which is what the ego wants to do at all costs, is defend. And, you know, this was almost two and a half, three years ago. From that moment to this moment, I'd have been living in the past. Uh, not making moves, not growing, uh, not working on the business, not working on myself. Like all those things, not having rich, the relationships I do have in my life, making them richer, being engaged with them. There would have been a huge cost if I'd have taken this other path of defending myself. So in that moment, I saw up close how the courage not to fight back totally just really brought peace, calmness, and love to my life. So that's an example for me. What about you? Well, before we get to my, I, I, I want to congratulate you on that because I saw that first firsthand and lived through that with, with you part of the way. And I think that that was a classic example of how courage translates into power. You didn't allow that to suck your energy out. You continued to focus on things that needed to be focused on and you didn't make anybody wrong. I think so much of what um, courage involves is holding your tongue and not making others wrong um, and sending, sending them love, um, sending them appreciation or understanding. Everybody's got a point of view and it doesn't necessarily have to be the one that we adopt. They're still worthy of love. 
Right. Thank, um, and thank you for that compliment. I appreciate it. You're welcome. It was really a, a powerful inspiration to me in my life. Thank you. I appreciate it, Keith. Thank I think you. about that a lot. Thank you. Um, no, I don't have any real um, examples like that. I think mo I've lived my life pretty much as a, hmm, I hate to say this, but almost as a bystander because it, I was late to coming to all of this. I wasn't as young as you are. I wish I, I, I was. And I made a lot of um, mistakes. So, so some of the things that I've done that have saved me from suffering um, that have helped me, I'm very new to. And I, I don't have an example that I can share with well, you. Well, let me, in, in your law practice, uh, well, that's and, a little, I think it's, it's, it's kind of different, but if a client says, you didn't do a good job enough oh, for me, or you no. didn't do this, or a client says, hey, why didn't you call me back, or whatever, you know, whether it's trivial or something big, how do you have the courage not to fight back? In, in the relationships you've had since divorce, how do you, if your partner accuses you of, you know, you're not showing up for me the way I want you to show up, or how do you not fight back in those and sort of defend yourself? Well, the first thing that I, I try to realize is that it may not be the words, it may not be the issue that they're even talking about. It may reflect something inside of them that's more important. For example, the client is not, it, that's irritated because they didn't call them back. Maybe about, you're not letting me know enough about this case, or I feel like this mm. is too ambiguous for me to tr trust you any longer. It might be a trust issue, so I try to explore a trust issue with them. Wow. If, it's a, if it's a female, a woman that I'm, in love with or having a relationship with is important to me, then what I try to do is to figure out where that's coming from. Do you feel like I'm, I'm cheating on you? Do you think that I'm not respecting you? Tell me more about what it is. Give I'm not giving you enough of my time, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, and so I think that's, I try to do that. I'm not sure I'm successful at it, but I think it's very important for you not to, it's like the Zen guy. What's the point of having a stake in it? If somebody else is suffering and you have respect uh, or a relationship with that person, find out why and see if there's something you can do. I'm not advocating <laughs> letting people run over you. That's not no. what I'm talking about. I'm talking about making sure that if there's something that has occurred, that you have a choice to either act out or not. And the acting out will not get you to a higher level. And there's no change that would come that would be positive for either the person who's making the claim or yourself. What's the point? Exactly. I think you pick your fights in, in, in many ways, and, the, and, and I think the, 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 the gold standard about what fight to pick is if there is greatest good for greatest many by standing up and by fighting. If there isn't, and there's no positive value that comes from it, you're simply going to be salving your ego for striking back, you're on the wrong path. Yeah, and I think you made a great point that we can kind of wrap this thing up with, is that the courage not to fight back doesn't mean that you take everything lying down it's just you're just calm and peaceful in your response to some things and not taking action is also a response uh and you know so so something trivial like you pay for a hotel room on vacation and the room isn't clean or you know the bedding hasn't been changed before you checked in uh you don't have to get irate about it upset about it just make a phone call hey listen you know the bed wasn't changed can That's you right. have someone come up and change the bed That's right. it's totally peaceful totally calm and things like that and, you know, you can choose to, if they won't do what you want them to do, or your, I think, really reasonable request to have the bed ch changed, or talking to a friend or significant other for them to consider a different point of view, if they won't do it, just, just let it go and just be like, okay, we'll switch hotel rooms, or, you know, why don't we change topics right now? Or why don't we take a break, you know? Uh, and we, we'll revisit this, you know, and come back hopefully in the spirit of, lifting our relationship up. And yeah. so I think those are some of the things that can help you, you know, use the courage not to fight back. Those are really great points, Keith. I'd add one thing that we haven't even talked about, but I think it's very important, and that is a lot of people who struggle with this issue, always wanting to fight back, always wanting to stand up for themselves, always wanting to make the other person wrong or have a point of view that they're, that's heard, regardless of whether it's important or not, or a higher good is served, or they're wallowing in the dirt, or they're, you know, not accomplishing anything. I think part of that comes from this terrible habit of taking things personally. The more you take things personally, the more you're going to suffer. <laughs> you know, traffic doesn't care if you miss your appointment, no, right? And no. the doc is doing his best to see the 15 people ahead of you, but you're waiting an hour. I mean, those things, countless examples in our daily life, you can't take it personally, you know? I just think if you take things personally, you're going to suffer a whole lot more. Forget about whether it's right or wrong, just is this going to create suffering for me? Right. Yeah, it is. Well, then don't do it. Don't do it. Simple <laughs> as that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, that's today's show. Again, it's the courage not to fight back. 
I think that if you uh, follow some of these steps or tips that we uh, we talked about here, I think you'll really find that it helps you know you be more peaceful and calm uh, and connected with your loved ones, uh, with your colleagues at work, and with yourself. And if you have any tips that you'd like to share with us, please leave them in the comments so we can learn from them. Absolutely. We're, this, this is all about um, people helping each other. And we're just two guys talking, and we have a very tiny view of, of, of all the things that have happened to everyone. So we would like to hear from you. And it's just, this is great fun. I, we do hear from you, and it's really helpful. And it helps us um, sort, of, sort of guide and, and customize what our next show uh, might be about. Absolutely. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Keith. All right. I love you, buddy. Take Thank care, you. Man.